My name is Christine Marie Quigless and I am the Period Empress. It is such a pleasure to welcome you to a phase specific yoga class and today's phase that we're working on is Queen Phase. For those of you who are not in the collective, Queen Phase is the embodied name that we give to the luteal phase particularly the middle towards the end of luteal phase. Our energy is variable and we wanna capitalize on the ups and downs and reflect that back for our body. We have a relationship with our body. We nourish our body, our body. we give it what, we, what it needs and we know what it needs because it has a specific set of needs in each phase. The energy is not meant to be forced it's a queen. We don't force a queen to do something. We let the queen draw it out of us. So in this class today, we're going to have some poses that require a lot of energy and some that require very little energy and allow gravity to do more work. That said, always work at your own pace and let the breath be the most important thing that you are focusing on. I will do my best to cue your breath, but just in case you ever get lost, an inhale will always be when the body expands, an exhale will always be when the body contracts. If you are familiar with Ujjayi breathing, an inhale is going to make a sound, both, both directions of breath are going to make a sound like the ocean. The Ujjayi breath is really excellent for generating heat in the body. If you ever find that you're too hot, you can always exhaust yourself by breathing out through the mouth. In our Ujjayi breathing, we're always going to breathe through the nose, but if you're overheated, let it out through the mouth and notice what happens with the belly. The breath, the fluid of air enters through the nose and it kind of, we want to send it down to our root chakra and then when we exhale, the breath comes back up and out. I would like you to try to focus there. You can still hold your abs and you can still create tension in your abs, but if you're creating so much tension that your abs, that you're not able to expand and contract, then um, your abs are too tight. Uh, so, <laughs> if you hate me for that, then <laughs> fast forward. Um, go to another video, but I am, uh, your abs have so much, so much, your belly has so much information to give you. When our abs are too tight, then we restrict the information that we can receive. And it's pretty vital stuff. Uh, check out what's happening in the second chakra and that can help you understand why I think it's so important that you um, allow some space and not just a brick wall in your abs. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to begin with our hands at prayer, Samas Hi, and we're going to just do a quick body scan to make sure that we're placed correctly. I know that I am not placed as I would like to be. I'm not centered in my body, and this is a way we can ground ourselves. So I'd like you to first focus on your feet. You can even allow your eyelids to drop towards closed, so that you can really be in your body. On your feet, you should feel three points of contact. Two at the, the sort of like the base of a triangle as the ball of your, is the ball of your feet, uh, the ball of your foot, yes. And there are two balls of your feet. That's, I can speak English, okay. So you're gonna push into the balls of your feet and if you wanna feel what that feels like, raise your toes so many of us actually have our toes holding our weight and that creates a ton of stress for the entire body because toes, like fingers, were not made to hold that much weight. You need the palm of the hand if you are in handstand and you need the palm essentially of the foot. And to capitalize on that, you're going to put energy, push energy into the balls of your feet, lift your toes to test that you're centered on your feet and automatically, what else is gonna take that weight? Your heel. That's the apex of your triangle. So you're pushing through those three points. And then as we move up through the legs, we're going to feel a 
uh, an energy, a wave going up through our knees. And as it moves up through our knees, please don't lock your knees. Locked knees restrict flow, restrict circulation, restrict breathing, restrict what we're here to do. If there's not flow in all of your poses, just a little bit of a bent knee moving towards straight but not locked, then you're not doing yoga. So we want to allow that circulation to move through. And now your hips. I'd like you to bend your knees just a little bit. And I want you to feel your hips. Some of us have our hips. We, we, we uh, turn our hips under. And then some of us, like me, are sway back. And we, we sort of naturally kind of arch our back and stick our butts out. We want to have our hips in the middle. So try to find that place where you feel like your center of your crotch is pointing towards the ground. So if you tend to curl under with your pelvis, then you're gonna feel like you're sticking your butt out a little bit. And for those of you who stick your butt out naturally, you're gonna feel like you're turning your hips under a little bit, but that is actually gonna be your center. Now you can bring your knees back towards straight, keep lifting. We might feel a little bit of tension in our center of our body, in our second to third chakra, but remember, just a slight bit of tension. If you are forcing and using your core to hold your whole yoga practice together, then you're more weightlifting. It's the same as somebody going into handstand who's just bulbous with muscles. Usually they're forcing the pose rather than letting it be the balancing pose that it is. Same for headstand, same for shoulder stand. So we want to stay in balance. Yoga is strengthening and stretching at the same time. Continuing to move our body, to move our stand up through our body, some of us might be curling forward. I know I am hunching a little bit forward. Allow, by pushing into all that we've scanned up to so far, allow that to be straight. And with that straightness, then automatically your rib cage is gonna expand just slightly. You'll feel a slight pinching in the backside, in your shoulder blades. That's your rib cage opening up. And then because of that pinching, we wanna flatten our shoulder blades. So we're gonna feel like we're being pushed through two panes of glass. Allow your shoulder blades to feel like they're flattening, like that amazing scene in Black Swan where Natalie Portman is learning how to do the swan arms and how the, the, the dancer who's coaching her says, your arms are moving from the root of your body, from your root chakra up and out. That, there's a flatness that is created as a result of, of feeling that anchor of your shoulder blades and of your arms coming from that lower back and from that pelvis. So feel that slight arch in your rib cage, slight flatness in your back, and there's your center. And finally, our neck, we, were, we would hope that it's gonna continue the line that our spine is now making, and we're going to pull up through the center of our head. Most of us think that standing straight is having our chin pushed out. That's not straight. You actually want to pull up through the center and it might even feel like a string is a little bit forward connected to the sky and is pulling you slightly forward, but that's actually what it feels like to be straight. Once you're there, let the hands go from prayer and let them relax to either side of your body. Let's inhale two arms up and over, let them meet overhead in prayer. Exhale, let's swan dive forward, bending your knees. This is our first swan dive, it's our first forward bend. So let your body, let your knees bend, even if you're super stretchy. And let your whole body fold over your legs, supported by your thighs. And now, from here, I'd like you to shake, I'd like you to bring both hands to the ground if you can reach the ground. If you can't reach the ground, please grab uh, blocks or cushions or something that can put you into contact with the ground so that you can get the benefits of this beautiful pose. Standing forward bend. And now I'd like you to inhale, 
Feeling the expansion through the lower back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Keeping both hands in contact with however you're reaching the ground, eventually it's the ground, be it through blocks, bolsters, or your hands. And shake your head, yes. And then shake your head, no. Wonderful. Okay, I'd like you to bring both hands. You can let your eyelids open up now. So letting your eyes open. Let your gaze point towards the ground. So you might have to lift your head a little bit. Otherwise, your gaze is looking through your shins or your knees. Um, now, bringing the gaze so that it's facing the floor, I'd like you to bring both palms to your shins. I'd like you to inhale and push to flat back. Legs coming towards straight. Exhale, bring the hands behind the calves and pull your body forward just a slight push forward, but always working for 80% effort, nothing more. That allows your body to expand on its terms, not on your terms. It allows listening. Inhale, bring the hands down to the ground. And I'd like you to just walk both feet back to plank pose. Now, you know how obsessed I am with grip and with supporting your wrists. Make sure that your supporting hands are making an L between the finger and the thumb, an L on the left hand, and a backwards L on the right hand. Make sure that your fingertips are gripping the ground. This is gonna protect your wrists, and this is preparation for handstand. Let your weight as much as possible rock into your hands and walk your feet back to plank. Inhale. Exhale. Now in plank, a lot of us want to sag. We want to lower our middle body. That's not plank. That's like a halfway upward facing dog. Or we want to point our butt in the air and that's a halfway downward dog. We want to be in plank where our body essentially makes like a ramp. If we had a marble, we could roll it down our spine and it would roll perfectly down. It wouldn't pull or fall off halfway through. Inhale, exhale, inhale, push back to downward facing dog, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, Let's now bring our knees to the ground, and I'd like you to bring your hands, I'd like you to let your feet, um, let the tops of your feet kiss the mat, and bring your hands back just a little bit so that your spine is neutral and your body is in table. It's kind of making, you're touching the ground at four points of contact, two through your hands using the supportive grip and through the foot, knee, shin combination that you have going on through the legs. Let's inhale for cat and cow. So inhale, cow, letting our body expand towards the earth, opening our gaze is reaching to the sky. The tip of our tailbone is pointing towards the ceiling. Exhale, the center of our back is now reaching towards the sky. Our head is, our gaze is looking through our legs and we're feeling such space through our shoulder blades and through our lower back. Inhale. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And now we're going to do side plank. So we started with front plank and now we're going to go for side plank. To do, we're going to take it in levels as I like to do. So we're going to lean our body into our right hand and we're going to bring our left foot back so that it is on the edge or past the edge of the mat, but it's sitting flat. Okay, the, the bottom of our foot is flat with the ground. And now this right leg can 
support us, you're welcome to have it do that, or we can grow our site plank. For those of you who want to hang out here, you're welcome to. For those of you who want to add a little bit to this pose, we can take our right foot and we can bring it to meet our left foot by pushing into our right hand, protecting our wrist, of course, and we can keep our hand on our hip. So let's inhale and push through. So now we have two feet sort of on the ground. The left foot is kind of kicked up off the ground just a little bit, but we are over, as much as we can be, we are over our right arm. And I had to walk up a little bit so that I could really make sure that there was alignment between my head, my shoulder tip and my right, my right shoulder tip and my right wrist. And make sure that your body is facing the screen. So it's sort of like if these were headlights, they would be shining on the screen. Now from here, you can bring your hand up or for those of you who want to, you could actually bring that left foot so that it points, the toe points towards the sky or you can bring the left foot up to tree, or you can even stretch it to the sky, or you can take a bind with it, a toe hold, but I can't do that today. Let's inhale here, exhale, inhale, exhale, bring, unfold your pose from wherever you were, coming back to the beginning of our pose, Inhale, bring that left hand to trace towards the screen and then let it go back just to give yourself a counter stretch. Exhale, let it un unravel again. And now let's take it on the other side. So let's bring our left hand down to the ground to tabletop and let's prepare by centering our body, checking our grip, checking and resetting everything that happened and letting the left side be its own side and its own experience. So now what I'd like you to do is just like we did before. You're going to push into that left hand. You're going to kickstand, no you're not. You're going to keep the left foot pointing where it is, pointing in its direction. You can kickstand, but we're not doing that today. And bring the right foot so that the palm of the right foot is touching the ground. From here, you can take this and let this be your side plank. It absolutely is. Or if you'd like, you can step into side plank by bringing your left foot to meet your right foot. Make sure to shorten your stance so that you can have your side body over your shoulder tip over your wrist. And now from here, you can bring the arm up you can bring the leg up, you can bring the leg up to tree, the leg up to extended, extended side leg, or you can take toe hold. Wherever you are, take two breaths here. Inhale, exhale, inhale, Inhale, unfolding the pose as gently as you can, going back to where you started and bringing the body to tabletop. Let's bring the right arm up to the sky and let it go through to counter that twist that we just did on the left side. And now our hands, now we are in tabletop. From here, we're going to take inverted table. So what I'd like you to do is you're just going to sit on your butt and you're going to plant two feet very solidly and you're going to make tabletop with your body, except it is the other direction. So two hands are planted squarely, just like they were before, still protecting your wrist. The feet are planted into the ground this time instead of the knees and the shins. Um, plant the whole anchoring you in the legs. And from here, you're going, and the fingertips, this is super important. The fingertips are facing the feet. Make sure they're pointing towards the feet. It's a lot harder if they're not. Now from here, you're gonna push into all four points of contact, four, because your butt is gonna go into the air. So inhale, 
and your middle body comes into the air. You're welcome to keep your focus forward over your knees at the sky, or you can break the line and allow yourself to look backwards, whatever you are comfortable with. And from this reverse tabletop, I'd like you to go into reverse plank. And that means the same way that plank, you could take a marble and you could slide it down the ramp. That's what you're gonna do with your body. You're gonna bring your feet out a little bit. And the challenge is gonna be to keep that middle body steady. 80% effort. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, walk your feet back to tabletop and allow your seat to come to the ground. From here, I'd like you to bring both hands to either side of your legs and allow your feet to move forward, forward, forward until that your legs are close to straight, but never straight, right? And we're going to bring our arms up overhead. So now we're in staff pose and you're welcome to stay here. If you'd like to take this pose a little more deeply, inhale and let your hands come towards your feet. Now, you can do it the way that I did it and come to bend with a flat back, or you can walk your hands down. If you decide to do it with a flat back, wherever the back stops being flat is where you're going to let your hands stop you so that you can get a safe stretch. For those of you who decide that you want to just go for the stretch and really feel it in your hamstrings, then you can let the back, you can bend through the back without keeping that stable upper body and you will get a deeper stretch in the hamstrings. Wherever you are, inhale, and stretch up, 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 as far as you can forward. Exhale, now let the body melt over the legs. Inhale, wherever you let your body melt to, stretch from that place of melting. Exhale, let the body melt some more. Here you can grip, you're welcome to grip your feet, your tops of your, the bottoms of your feet. You can make a grip with your um, clasp your hands together and make a bind, whatever works for you. Inhale, exhale, of course, whatever you decide to do, make sure that your shoulders are away from your ears and make sure that you're breathing. This is a great place to acknowledge that breath and make sure it's getting all the way to the lower back. Inhale and begin to walk your hands up your legs, not the way that some of us arrive to the pose. And now I'd like you to scoot your body, pushing, putting both hands on the ground, like you scoot your body towards the front of your mat and lower your body down, 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 down by grabbing on to your lower thighs and letting your lower thighs help you slowly make your way down so that your body is in the supine position. From here, we're going to go ahead into plow pose. You cannot look at the screen while doing plow pose because it would break the line of your neck and that's very dangerous. So please watch this part and then do it. Or if you're comfortable and you're used to plow pose and shoulder stand in your practice, you're welcome to listen to my vocal cues and follow them. Whichever way you decide to do when you're doing this pose, make sure that your gaze is towards the ceiling at all times. That's going to protect your neck. Let's begin. Walk your feet towards your butt so that they become flat. 
And now from here, I'd like you to push both hands on the ground and you're gonna just kick up and back to bring your feet over your head into plow pose. If you're scared, if you're not comfortable with this, if you've never done this before, go to a yoga studio and do this with a live instructor so that you can make sure to take care of yourself. I can't see you, so I can't be responsible for what you might do, and I would hate for you to hurt yourself. So, for those of you who feel comfortable moving into, into plow and then shoulder stand, listen to my vocal cues or watch the video and then redo it with me afterwards. Okay, so we're gonna push our hands against the floor and we're going to push our feet off of the ground and we're gonna bring our feet over our head and they're gonna land behind our head in plow pose. Our feet are together overhead and this is a great place to try to find where your back is straight. I can honestly say that I'm always surprised by how far forward my, my back actually is, but um, we are a human body, not robots, <laughs> and we're not gonna be perfectly straight. So now, I'd like you to bring both hands to support your lower back. So they're going to start at your lower back. For many of you, you can hang out here. And the straighter, the higher your hands go up your back towards your neck, the straighter your shoulder, your plow pose is going to be. The, the more perpendicular your upper body, excuse me, <laughs> the more perpendicular your lower body is going to be to the ground, your seat. Okay, now for those of you who want to do shoulder stand, listen to my cue. So I have walked my hands up pretty far. You can hear my uh, voice is choked. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just crawl. I'm gonna put my knee on my head and I'm gonna bend one foot towards, one foot, just bend my leg so that my foot is pointing towards the sky with my toes. And I'm gonna put my other knee on my leg and do the same thing. That's super, super, super soothing and comfortable for me. Now, watch out, my elbows are just splaying, so make sure that yours are not. Mine were. Now, from here, I'm gonna walk my, one of my legs so that the knee is now pointing towards the sky, and then bring the other leg so the knee is pointing towards the sky. Always trying to keep my back as straight as possible. Now that I've got my knees set up, I can just simply lift my feet so that they, my pointed toes, so that they are pointing towards the sky. And now I'm in shoulder stand. Cool. Now, from here, you can play. So, you can go for balance. If you want to go for full balance in shoulder stand, you have to push your body towards straight as much as you can, and then climb your two hands up your legs and that's going to allow a lovely balance for shoulder stand on your neck. You can also play by folding the legs into easy pose, or you can open the legs. I am blocked by the wall to my left, so I can't open the legs. You can open the split or whatever you want. This is queen, so we're really working with the energy that's there for us in the present moment and not pushing. Okay, when you're ready to come down from your pose, whenever that might be, you have two ways to get down. You can climb and unbuild the same way that you built it, or you can get a little ab workout and press so that the two feet stretch, 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 stretch towards the back and you grab with your abs to lower them as slowly as possible towards the ground to plow. Either way, let's all meet in plow. When you're ready, bring your hands overhead to grab your ankles, and this creates a lovely tension. And now let your butt move towards the ground. But by holding on to your ankles and letting your body roll through the spine, it creates this lovely stretch that you can feel 
every part of the spine as it makes its way to the ground. Oh, so cool. Hmm, unfold your legs, bring your feet back so that they are flat on the ground. And now we're going to take dolphin pose to give ourselves a just slight counter stretch. So you're going to let your hands move down, I mean your hands, your feet move towards the bottom of the mat. And you're going, as they move towards the bottom of the mat, before they get all the way to straight, Act like the feet are an anchor and they're pulling your heart chakra, pulling the middle of your chest towards the sky. Your head stays on the ground, so it essentially, without holding weight on it, is looking backwards, just like shoulder stand. Don't look at the screen right now. Follow the cues or watch this part and then follow. But this won't be as dangerous as shoulder stand. And then eventually you're going to scoot your lower, your elbows back so that your upper body is supported by your elbows and you're kind of like cupping your butt or you can let your hands lay flat. Whatever feels comfortable, feel that stretch in the lower spine and the middle spine. Shoulders away from the ears. Bitta, bitta. Please, please, please. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, let's unfold from this, allowing your head to slide back down, allowing your shoulders to lay back, allowing your legs to stay where they are if you'd like. Or for people like me who have weak lower backs, you can support your legs by letting your feet come towards the outside of the mat, either side, and let your knees meet in the middle, and that's going to support your um, lower back. Wherever you are, let's take Shavasana for three minutes. Mm. Allowing everything you did today to land into your body. Shavasana is just as important as the hardest pose that you might have done today. The pose that pushed out the greatest amount of sweat or effort is great. But Shavasana, Shavasana is essentially like going on a trip, collecting a bunch of really cool trinkets and clothes and things. And Shavasana is the moment where you pack them into the bag and secure the bag before you get out of the before you leave the hotel or the Airbnb or wherever you stay at your friend's house. That's Shavasana. If you don't do Shavasana, you might have collected all those cool things, but no one will know because you left them at the house or at the hotel or at the Airbnb. Shavasana makes sure that your practice comes off of the mat with you.
allow your breath to deepen. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, rotate your wrists, rotate your feet around the ankles. And then bring the feet so that they are flat on the ground, palms of the feet flat on the ground, and then make a choice. Are you moving into an active day or in the middle of the day you've got some things to still do for today? Some things to enjoy, some things to embrace, some things to create, some things to have fun with, some things to play with? Or are you turning in for the night? Is this the end of your day? Is this the, the great exhale so that you relax into your evening. If that is the case, you're going to bring your body to the left. If you, if the former is the case, then you're going to bring your body to the right and let the upper hand, whichever hand that is, depending on which way you uh, turn, push against the ground. And then let your body come to easy pose, facing the screen. One of the coolest things we did today is we allowed massive compression in our throat chakra, the fifth chakra, sky blue, and we allowed massive compression at the back of the throat chakra. So we compressed the front of the throat chakra and opened up the back of the throat and vice versa. That's so helpful because when it is clean and has received all the nutrition that comes from working it in those two ways, it becomes more helpful for you to know when you're telling the truth and when you're not telling the truth. We all do it. It's okay. But when you find yourself talking today and you start to choke a little bit, that's going to let you know that what you're saying is actually not in alignment with you. Um, it's always really helpful to play with shoulder stand and its opposite dolphin because it allows that. Another great one for that, for stretching this part, especially is camel pose. Maybe we'll do some of that tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us today. We did just a slightly longer than normal short class and slightly shorter than normal long class. So both the collective members and those of you who are making daily practice get a little bonus of time. Some of you spent more time on your mat in, in your loving embrace of self-care and others spent a little less time on your mat so that you can take what you have and share it with more of the world. But remember, if you're doing this and you're in clean phase, then you want to be particular about who you're sharing your time with. You're extremely sensitive and what's moving through you and the learnings that are going to be landing are so precious. Don't waste them on people who aren't worth it. Let's bring hands to prayer and I wish you namaste.